Have you ever thought, there's got to be a better and simpler way to learn organizational strategies? 5 Minutes Learning has a global and diverse collection of case studies to help management students click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our upcoming and interesting case studies. By entering the market, iTunes addressed the recording industry's problem of illegal music downloads and addressed consumer demands for digital, a la carte songs. iTunes Blue Ocean Strategy created a new category of music sales. That allowed artists to profit and consumers to purchase single songs instead of entire albums. The growth of digital music has been driven largely by iTunes for years. Globally, the music industry can be divided into three segments creation, marketing, and distribution. Artists create music, which is marketed and distributed by a network of labels, distributors, retailers, broadcasters, and DJs and clubs. At all three stages, labels provide capital and marketing expertise to create, promote, and distribute music. Branding, community building, and information dissemination are all aspects of music marketing. Compact discs and audio cassettes are commonly used as media for storing music. Public and private music shows are also forms of music distribution. There are many intermediaries between artists and customers in the music business. Each intermediary adds to the final cost of the product. Bertelsmann, for instance, sells music directly to its club members at low prices by combining the roles of multiple intermediaries. Selling solo albums was another way to cut back on advertising and distribution expenses. Record companies like Emmy, Warner, and BMG have been doing this for a long time since they control major marketing and distribution channels. These companies bind artists to long term contracts. Many artists became bound to record companies because of their financial muscle, experience, and marketing prowess, all of which were necessary to succeed in the business. Furthermore, emerging artists were unable to compete on their own since they did not have access to big companies. They either had to be lucky or resourceful enough for a record company to spot them and sign them, or they had to be content with operating in niche markets. As a result of their power over the industry, labels reportedly took a large share of profits. Apple CEO Steve Jobs reportedly acknowledged that. Despite free services offering a wide selection of songs for unlimited downloads, their quality was poor and their performance unreliable. Subscription based services were also unpopular due to the limitations they imposed on song downloads. Many even suspended song access when the subscriptions have expired. Jobs believed that music piracy was a serious issue. It is behavioral in nature, and technological solutions cannot address it. He had the impression that because no viable alternative was provided, users resorted to piracy. For purchasing music at a reasonable cost with the introduction of iTunes, Apple opened up a vast new market space in digital music, which it has now dominated for more than a decade. Apple witnessed the flood of illegal music file sharing that began in the late 1990s, facilitated by file sharing programs such as Napster, Kazaa, and LimeWire. By 2003, more than 2 billion illegal music files were traded every month. While the recording industry fought to prevent physical CD cannibalization, illegal digital music downloading grew. With free digital music download technology available, The trend toward digital music was obvious. This trend was emphasized by the rapidly increasing demand for MP3 players that played mobile digital music, such as Apple's popular iPod. With the creation of iTunes in 2003, Apple capitalized on this decisive trend with a clear trajectory. In collaboration with five major music labels BMG, Emmy Group, Sony, Universal Music Group, And Warner Brothers Records, iTunes provided legal, simple to use, and flexible a la carte song downloads. By allowing people to buy individual songs and strategically pricing them more reasonably, iTunes eliminated a major customer annoyance.
The need to buy an entire CD when they only wanted one or two songs on it. iTunes also outperformed free downloading services in terms of sound quality and user friendly navigation, search, and browsing functions. Apple was able to capitalize on a first mover advantage with its iTunes Music Store by entering the market early and firmly entrenching its brand name. By 2010, the iTunes Store had expanded to become the world's largest music retailer. Apple was able to capitalize on this advantage even further by developing proprietary technology for the iPod that protected songs downloaded from the iTunes Store from piracy. Another feature of this digital rights management system was that no competing MP3 player could play songs that were protected by it. As a result, Apple gained a significant advantage over existing competitors and potential new entrants into the MP3 arena. This controlled open platform strategy has also been used by Apple to develop content for its iPhone and iPad product lines. The App Store was introduced to the world as a component of iTunes, which was already a consumer favorite. Apple gained a first mover advantage in the smartphone market once again by being the first smartphone app outlet to make it simple to distribute, access, and download content directly to its iPhone. Furthermore, despite Apple's strict content control, third party developers flocked to have their content distributed through the App Store. Apple retained the right to refuse content and received 30% of all sales made through its distribution channel. Apple maintained the model that made iTunes and the iPod so successful by using its market dominance to keep app prices low. Many of the apps available on the App Store were free or only 99 cents. Creative thinking was a reason why iTunes became a success. Apple's true success is defined by its ability to innovate and create new experiences for its customers. Based on its ever expanding content base. Currently, iTunes provides over 37 million songs, as well as movies, TV shows, books, and other media podcasts. It has now sold over 25 billion songs, with users downloading an average of 15,000 songs per minute on a daily basis. It is estimated that iTunes accounts for greater than 60% of the global digital music download market. In the meantime, for more than a decade, Apple has dominated this blue ocean, as other online stores close upon this market. The challenge for Apple will be to maintain its sights on the market into competitive benchmarking or high end niche marketing. Thank you so much for listening to this video. Do not forget to subscribe this YouTube channel for receiving updates about my upcoming case study videos.